Yeah, uh, yeah, we are. Here we are for the final phase of our two-part extravaganza. Amazing. Have you have a good yeah. day at work or anything? Taking your Sorry? was it did you go to gymnastics? Take your daughter to gymnastics? Was it something like this? Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, I just meant that there was too much uh gallery to to get home and uh, during the day assholes. So that's what I was referring to. Yeah, yeah. A lot of a lot of busy lives we lead. Yeah, a, yeah, so we have to be here and there. So thank you for last time and uh, oh yeah, people respond and they get to, to eat. And get, that, that's really lovely. One of the beautiful things is that it lasts a long time, although it goes out on the time, on the radio day. It, yeah. it goes along for, a, yeah, oh, the mixed cloud means it lasts for quite a long time I'm sure probably I won't say forever but um, yeah yeah it's okay <laughs> it's good, good. So we're going to play your single this week um, to start it off because I don't think it got although we talked a lot about your music we didn't actually play enough attention to the new single so we're going to kick off the show this week with the new single yes yes that's that's great it, 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 last time we played uh uh, the current one I start at the start of the show last week. So this time that will be the first the first one has to be the new one coming. Um, tell me the name again. Yeah, it's uh Libere Filcheri Ballet. Ballet. And quickly what's it about? We won't go too deep this time, but let's let's remind ourselves what because it's um it's a single with a message. Yes, indeed, indeed. But first of all, I would like to, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, talk about someone uh, who is detained in uh, the Democratic Republic of uh, Congo. His name is uh, Seku Manga. He's uh, a freedom freedom fighter and uh, fighting for the African unity, and he's been. Uh, arrested and jailed for nearly two months now. And uh, no one is talking about it. And I think that is wrong. And my philosophy, my approach, okay, is that uh, 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 anyone fighting for freedom and will go through kind of difficulties, those type of people that deserve my, att my attention and support. That is all what I stand for, justice and peace and love and freedom of speech so uh so kumanga uh, uh, this message is from anderson law from london and i feel that you're not on your own and there are yeah, millions you're not on your own if we're all connected this is uh, this is for you yes, there, there are million people supporting you and you are so much loved and by the grace of the lord you will be released soon and i'm asking uh the uh, DRC government uh, to have a human sense and a release you. So that's the welcome my message for uh, Seku Manga. And now coming to my new single. My new single is says uh, uh, Liberate Phil uh, Sheri Bali. So as I said that in one of my messages, uh, uh, she is a nice on the cake. She is just a nice on the cake in terms of human rights breaches and abuses in Ivory Coast. And as you can see, when you look at uh, the economic situations of the country, these rulers came in power in 2010. And by promise that they will uh, change the country in a positive manner with everyone okay, having uh, an accommodation and there will be the social housing for the poor people and also the living standard will be raised and uh, freedom of expression will be of standard. But now we are in 2022 and there is a total chaos. So the country has, of course, as they said, the country has changed, but in the opposite direction. So 
negatively, the country is not living in chaos and uh, uh, in a real uh, uh, dictatorship ruling. And uh, the economy, the economy is down, and uh, the the national budget is in deficits of twenty one point seven billions deficit. So meaning that the country rely on external debt. And the ex according to the IMF, the actual, the current uh, as of June 2022, the debt of the country is about 1,600.01 million US dollars, which mean that, yeah. which mean that <laughs> my children, their children and all my descendants are in debt for years. And, but that is not the issue. If we are in debt and we can, we can live better living standard, that is much better. But the country is living in a chaotic country. And the inflation rate is actually around the 6%, 6, 6, 6 in Ivory Coast. And the prices has increased Salaries have not moved up since 2010, and there is uh, 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 depressions, economic depression in the country. And you could see that the promise of uh, 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 free medical care, the, fr the promise of free housing, nothing has been realized and uh, have been achieved. And you could see that. Uh, instead of having accommodations for the poor, the ruling class is actually demolishing people's houses without warning. And that is the alarming point. It is not Very just annoying. about, yeah. So as I know here, for example, you need to uh, allow people time to vacate the properties and you need to create the condition for them, okay, uh, uh, to, uh, 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 to be accommodated reals uh, so that they have a shelter. But yeah. What is, yeah. That's a uh, very, what, very frightening thing. I can just think of my, um, just my family, especially when I was younger and the older people yeah. in my family, thinking about them, you know, thinking about them losing their houses or not being housed. I mean, I remember my granny got housed by the council and just think, you know, I mean, it's just incredibly important to have stability yeah. in your home otherwise it, it ruins you it just ruins you yes indeed indeed so i, I indeed Jude. so you will look when you look at the picture people are sleeping in symmetries they are sleeping wow. in, with children wow. and uh, and uh, women with no shelter no condition put in place to support the old people. So like and the, the dead people have got better beds than the living people if you're sleeping in, in cemeteries. Yeah. It's like they're it more, does. it's almost like they're more comfortable than, than we are. If, yes, so, if, yes, it, it, yes. So they are, they are disturbing the dead, the dead actually. So they, they, they're cohabitating uh, uh, in a cemetery with the dead. So that is really alarming. And I've never seen that in any part of the world. No. So is, is, it the, is no. that the change by promise for, for the country? Is that okay? Uh, the one house, one Ivorian, one house accommodation by, by promise? I mean, okay, and, we don't expect people to make all their promises as soon as whatever, but you expect them to try and to get some of the way. You know, I mean, we all want, you know, when politicians come in, when they're making promises, we sort of know that it's probably not going to be quite what they say because life is hard and, and things don't usually get there, but that's completely going the opposite direction. Yes, in, yes, I do agree with you. We have uh, to be patient for a thing to happen. But if thing can't happen, why demolish people's houses, people's accommodation? The problem is not just they are demolishing uh, 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 people's accommodation. But the issue is they do that without proper care for the people 
without putting in place alternative for people to be shelters. Are they doing and without, it because they, they're saying that people aren't living in good enough accommodation, so they just knock it down? Is that their kind of excuse for knocking down people's houses? Is it a kind of idea that they're going to remake the country? Is that the kind of rhetoric? Yeah, yeah, yeah they want to make the country better. But in order to make the country better, there are measures as well. You have to make sure you have to put in place for people to be protected. Yeah, you, can't so you, not, to... you can't just take away. I mean, they do this, rich people anyway, through history. There's lots of things about people doing this at times, getting rid of the poor where the poor people live because they think it's sort of unsightly or they they have a dream of things being better or a more idealistic city. And they say, we need to get rid of these awful houses in order to have some proper modern healthy houses but the yes. thing is, the people living in those houses and they're living there because they haven't got anywhere better to go yes of course i do agree with you Jude. i do agree with you but the point i'm trying to make here mm. is the lack of care for those people the lack of preparation the lack mm. of alternative to protect children and when you see these children uh, uh, sleeping in yeah. under, in a in the rain, in bare streets, with no, 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 nothing to, 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 to nothing at all. All what they have have been demolished, and it is like they will come in the morning and uh, wake you up, and while you are having a nice dream, they knock at your door and they say, "You okay? We come to demolish your yeah. your house, and you have to leave right now." And they have the police with them, uh, yeah. uh, uh, the gangs, uh, uh, what they call. Uh, um, uh, police with them and the, to 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 get to, to to kick people out and they have their accommodation dem demolished. It is. Are there any? Is, um, <laughs> can I ask? Is there any journalists or anybody in particular who's writing about it who we could follow, like long term people who are. Oh, oh yes, I have no report. There are no real reports. Uh, 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 about that in in, in Ivory Coast, uh, because the press is that uh, uh, the press is so uh, uh, dogmatized yeah, uh, uh, that they, they so. do not report such things. But because we have been uh, uh, criticizing recently those issues, now they started presenting these people uh, uh, on TV on national TV in Africa, which is a good thing. Which means that the work we are doing abroad as a diaspora is paying off. So they start now listening, and that is absolutely wrong. And that is the first, the second, the first point about uh, demolishing pe people houses without warning, without uh, care, uh, uh, replacement or shelter. And the second issue is that uh, they promise a freedom of expression. But the freedom of expression actually vanished in the country because of uh, 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 the death squad. The death squad they have in the country that will kidnap people at night, even in day, in broad daylight, they will kidnap you and take you in unknown direction and you will disappear and cold blood murders and assassination going on in the country. And this is already, this is known to the international community and to the United Nations. They are all aware of this, but no one talks about it. Why? I don't know. Why is the who are these death squad? Do we know who they might be that is doing? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the death squad. The death squad are government uh, 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 secrets. Uh, 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 um, what we call uh, yeah. They are called the government secret agent, uh, having uh, weapons and uh, uh, heavily armed. Okay, if they, they are heavily harmed, even more than the national army, and they will go everywhere and they kidnap people and kill them. And uh, uh, they also uh, uh, equip young young people. And Do they recruit people like that, like a press gang, like you must yeah, join yes. the army, so they will yeah. take and young boys and stuff for the yes. army. Particularly, they recruit young people not in education. So yeah. they're not in education because they are prone to manipulations and yeah. they have no understanding. But they don't have anything else, do they? They need something. So they're looking 
people like that who have no education or who have no um no direction obviously they they take to direction because they don't have as you say something to resist that direction with yes of course yeah. so that that's yeah. that's the, the that's the second issue mm. so freedom of expression has has vanished the use of uh, uh, the, uh, the justice system to suppress people. Um, okay, you will see the prosecutor for even talking to your girlfriend will be arrested, taken to, to police under okay, a, a, a court order and sent to prison. So there is a total lack of, of, uh, of justice, of freedom, of liberty actually in Africa. And what is going on is absolutely worse than okay, uh, uh, the first 40 years of agricultural independence. And uh, now there are also people, political uh, uh, people who's been uh, 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 political opponent who have been arrested since 2010 and they are still in, in prison and uh, 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 some suffered uh, uh, poisoning in prison for, um. and no one, and people have been dying in prison and no one talk about it. No one talk about it. And that is, that is not fair. And the international community, they know there is the US Human Rights Watch. They made some report about it. Just a report is a report, no action was taken. So now uh, we in, uh, 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 in the diaspora, we decided to take actions so that things can change for the better in Ivory Coast. Otherwise, what is going on actually is a total dictatorship. And so that's you is are why. part of this diaspora that is putting pressure on the government, on international communities, by talking about what's really going on, by spreading the word when it seems that journalism isn't able to go into or speak from within Cote d'Ivoire and speak out to the world. This is what you have to put pressure on with yourselves and the conversation and you have the music that is a tool within this as well and this is what you're all doing you're trying to get together hold hands and shout this is going on it's amazing sort of community voice yes of course so actually it's appeared that uh, uh, more and more and more and people are turning to me and uh, even back from back home from my request on my Facebook page. Uh, you're there, but you don't see what is going on on messengers and, <laughs> and the messages, every thousand of messages coming from here. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't see much, it's true, it's true. Yeah, so <laughs> that, that is what is, that is what's happening actually. And then mainly Alpha Blondie, who's been on one of the major uh, uh, musician in Ivory Coast, the outspoken one, uh, has resigned has resigned because of uh, uh, because he took he took part for he took side for the government actually so he became a, a much more partisan uh, that not saying anything. So he's uh, got caught up in the um, uh, so he can't speak. He is no longer the voice on the outside commenting. He's involved or he's he's become as you say partisan. He's put his hat in the ring or I don't know with with whatever's going on already so it's no longer able right. to, to um, yeah. talk from the outside yeah. He's, like he's up, but yeah I respect him I respect him greatly yeah. musically yeah I respect him greatly musically great yeah. Uh, yeah. I bow down I bow down I bow down to him uh when it come to music but when it come to uh, judgment and uh, when it come or uh, uh, to uh, uh, the people, I do not think that uh, 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 he is doing the right thing at the moment. He use the population for like, a commercial purpose when he has to release his song and, and sell them. And that is the wrong thing to do. And that's why people have been turning to me, asking, okay, if I can do something, and I said, okay, I will put my word into music and see what happened. That's what I produced that song, that's this song, uh, Libere Pulcheri Ballet, which is not only about uh, Pulcheri Ballet, but about all the political prisoners detained in Africa, 
in Ivory Coast. So I'm calling on the government to have a second vote at human sense and release these people unfairly jailed. It's amazing. Well, I really think it's wonderful when you see prisoners being released as well. It's a wonderful moment and we need this for ourselves. So I say generally, if we can release prisoners of war or prisoners of conflict, then yeah. let's see those faces come out. And I remember when, um, obviously, that age, remembering Na Nelson Mandela being released. Um, what oh, a yeah, day yeah. that was. Oh, my God. I mean, we were all, it was one of those big community days, like the Queen's funeral, in a way. It's something you have to watch on the television. You have to be there and you have to see it unfold. And I, I remember it. I remember everybody waiting and waiting and, and the, the gates opening and little small things. Yes, I, I, I was very young at that time. Well, not that young. I was at university back yeah, home. Yeah, I was a young person. It was, yeah. uh, it, it was really interesting to see. And uh, I shed tears. So many people shed tears. But tears of happiness, of course. Tears of happiness, but, yes. I remember uh, people making jokes. My friend was saying, but but because they're just silly, it's like, he owed me five pounds. But um, and that always <laughs> it made us laugh because it was such a silly thing to yeah. say. <laughs> but, yeah, that, that, we were so happy. That's, that's, you know, we just got a bit hysterical. Yes, yes, true, true. And that is what I want for my people because just for your for the sake of your power. Uh, you, you you keep people in detention, depriving them of, of food and ill treating them, and that is not nice. No, it is not nice. No, it's awful. So when when you look at when you listen to the song, I said that uh, uh, in the song I did, uh, I said that uh, you promised to change our country, and effectively our our country have, has changed, but in the wrong direction. So we have death squads, we have. Uh, uh, Poisoning going on. We have uh, 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 political prison prisoners, and uh, we can't date women there because of the poison going on the, in the country. Because men are scared now because they use women for to poison to poison people. So now that's that's created another. Everybody's scared of each other. Yeah, people are scared of each other, and that is absolutely wrong. No, it's so horrible. That, really I, horrible. Can I, yeah. I? I wanted to talk a bit more about the music now, um, the history of music in Cote d'Ivoire, to give people an idea of the culture as well, because I think also Cote d'Ivoire, you know, it's had a difficult time because it hasn't had as much expression as it might have done through the years, and I from talking to you last, I got the impression that Ernesto Jeje was so important in giving a voice to um, Ivorian people. As I mean, reggae has been very important too, but but Ernesto Jeje seems to have given so much um, a musical identity by combining modern band leadership with sort of joyful type approach to music together with this community approach and together with folk music or musics um, and to give a real sense of Ivorian music in um, in a modern, in a more modern world in the mid 20th century, I guess the 1970s. Yes, of course. And uh, uh, when you look at the Ivory Coast, musically we have uh, uh, about, uh, first we have about 65 ethnic group. 65 mm -hmm. and which means that a small okay, musical group from here and there. But Ernesto GT was the one who really modernized Ivory Coast music and made it more professional. So the professional music mm -hmm. being played in Ivory Coast today is down to this man. Yeah, he, and, he did uh, music for clubs, didn't he? He made a sort yeah. of a club music, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, yeah. you'd just probably be playing music from other cultures that had managed, or uh, maybe other African cultures, but ones that had managed to go more forward with the club music. But he made it music yeah, yeah. that's good for that environment, for dancing, you know. When, when you listen to his, his music, there is uh, uh, 
uh, a mixture of rich in it. You have the blues, you from America, you have uh, Nigerians, you know, uh, 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 instrumental uh, Afrobeat, and yeah. uh, also you have some of the rock sound yeah, okay, yeah. in it, very rock based. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's been uh, uh, what I can I call uh, a music, a, a really musical arch, okay, uh, 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 he's a musical architect, I can yeah. say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a musical architect, architect and he used all these traditional instrument and uh, 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 traditional music to bring it into something which no one could, uh, uh, thought could work. And uh, I was very younger at the time in 1997 when uh, his Zibote came out and it ran the country crazy. He ran the, the country crazy and I could go, uh, it came in my, a uh, uh, local town for a concert, and we were children. We were, we were not allowed to uh, uh, in the uh, uh, concert room, and uh, but we stayed outside. We could hear the music and dancing outside, and uh, it, it was really interesting to see. But it was uh, um, politically eliminated by uh, uh, the then president Felix Oufodbani. We talked about last time the first Ivorian. Uh, uh, president, and that is the wrong thing. That is going to go. That goes on in in Ivory Coast. For apparently nothing, uh, they can just eliminate you if uh, you express. You know, because you know, there was a, a, a teacher strike demonstrations claiming for uh, better uh, pay in Ivory Coast at the time, and uh, that is when it was uh, 1983. Mm -hmm. That I was, uh, yeah, I was doing my GCSE at the time. I do remember when he died in June, and uh, the teachers were on strike. We couldn't uh, go to school for nearly a month, and and more, yeah, more two months there was no school. So, and uh, the president at the time uh, suspected a military coup, and. Uh, he said that the teachers were being manipulated by a political opponent to uh, carry out a military coup. And uh, Ernesto Gigi was a musician. He traveled to uh, Burkina Faso, Haute Volta at the time, to um, uh, for a concert. He had his first concert there, and uh, he came back Ivory Coast. And uh, once in Burkina Faso, he was approached by some political politician there who wanted uh, him to uh, use a bomb to explode uh, President Ufad Bwani. But he's uh, a patriotic person. So with that new, that's what, that's what the mistake he made and he came back in Ivory Coast, met the president and told him, okay, this is what they told me, this is what they proposed me, that they wanted to give me money to come and do this and do this and do this. But I know as an Ivorian, I can't do that. So, and the first said, okay, thank you for telling me that. And he returned to, uh, Burkina Faso to continue his concert. But Ufwe called him back in Ivory Coast, in Yamusukro, and he was given a poison tea as breakfast uh, from which he died. And the reason behind it was that, uh, Ufwe's reasoning, reasoning was that, uh, argument was that they didn't give him enough money, that's why he came to report that uh, to him. Had he received more money, he would have never come back to uh, uh, inform him about uh, uh, a plot going on. So Lots these, the best, it's, the, it's the best like kings and queens in the old days, isn't it? It sounds like to somebody from my background to sort of like old fashioned kings and queens, like 16th century. And... 
Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That started. So it got rid of them and it was a national heartache that mm -hmm. really when it died. Heartbreaking. That and somebody who gives their life to music as well. Because I think it's really honorable and joyful to give your life to music. It's a it's a real sacrifice. And especially in a situation in a country that needs some joy and joy in its own national identity and just to to be able to let them so let people's psyches let people's minds be free in music yes of yes of course of course but uh, uh it died and the, the country was musically uh, uh destroyed uh, uh, destroyed yeah so at that time uh in 1984 luckily we had the emergence of uh, Alpha Blondie, who came in to rescue the, the country. But That's with why a reggae has become so uh, important, uh, really, uh, yeah. Uh, which is an imported uh, 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 music, actually, even if it has its roots in, uh, yes, uh, in, uh, uh, in America, yeah. but it's a Jamaican mu music, but it is not something typical to uh, the Ivory Coast. So but it speaks Ivory to Coast, the world reggae, hasn't it? It's really traveled internationally. Uh, yes, of course. I mean, of I'd course. love to hear more Ivorian Coast music, you know, because I'm so interested in traditional musics too that people dance to in the community. I remember before you sent me some lovely links of people dancing at uh, community celebrations, I think it was, a little bit more uh, yes. down home. Yes. They were great, and I really loved the movements people were doing, you know, the, the little, you know, to celebrate the things that happen in communities, I guess, births and and um, anniversaries and meetings. And... Yes, it, yes, of course. Uh, 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 there was... Uh... Uh, traditional music still going on, despite the dominance of Ernesto Jedid at that time, because we have uh, uh, Amede Pierre who were there playing uh, uh, traditional music, but he was not as much powerful as uh, uh, Ernesto Jedid. And uh, there were some followers, uh, a disciple of uh, uh, Ernesto Jedid, Luxon Pado, when Ernesto Jedid died, he continued. Have we got uh, some music of his? Is, is yeah, he continued. Yeah, he continued uh, Zigligbiti, but it didn't he didn't continue it per se. He created something completely different, which he called like a laba laba, because he wanted laba, his laba. own yeah, laba laba. Like so he wanted, laba laba. Yeah, laba laba. So he wanted his own musical identity. Yeah. So this means that Zigligbiti disappeared now that up to now, because no one continued uh, uh, the legacy of Ernesto G.G. And also we have another rhythm which emerged alongside uh, Laba Laba, who was also called Polier. Polier was created by, uh, um, by uh, uh, Nyao Rejimi, but Nyao Rejimi died very early. He died very early. So Polier also disappeared. So what is happening actually that in the 90, uh, in the 1990s, then when I was at the university, uh, the student uh, uh, were students at the time, and based on the difficulties we are facing from the government, poor conditions, living conditions at the university, poor uh, study conditions, uh, we created the music called Zuglu. 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 Yes, yeah, Zuglu. Zuglu actually, that's uh, is if. if uh, Ivory Coast, actually, when we you talk about uh, Ivory Coast, the first thing that comes is Zuglu nowadays. And uh, in the in the twenties, uh, in the uh, in the twenties, year twenties, uh, came uh, this new rhythm, which uh, which is called uh, Decale Coupe. So Decale Coupe was created by Duke Saga, by Duke Saga. We mm -hmm. promoted the Ducale Coupe is a mixture of Zuglu and some rhythm from from uh, uh, DRC Congo, DRC Congo, because uh, Duke Saga didn't want uh, the dominance of Congolese music 
So he said that uh, we have it's been so... really big as well, isn't it? Congolese music. I, I mean, um, yes. in the seventies, especially, that kind of really boomed, didn't it? The... Yes. So yes, Congolese music colonized Africa, the whole Africa. So uh, uh, you can't go anywhere, Tineke, if you want to. Uh, uh, your bar to be working and then make revenues, you not, you have to play the Congolese. Congolese music, music. yeah, everybody loves it, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, it's not the only game in town. There's got to be so many other rhythms and Ivory Coast must have uh, yeah. stay. So, so now the, the interesting thing is coming. So it, it, it took that responsibility to challenge the Congolese music by intaking uh, the Congolese beat instrumental and incorporating that into the Zulu and some yeah. ivory and rhythm and it created what we call the coupe de calais so the, the coupe de calais is a mixture of uh, congolese sounds uh, ivory coast sound now it swallowed uh, the rumbas congolese rumbas and the whole rhythm of congolese music so now congolese the congolese uh, uh, have to do nowadays most of them do coupe de calais because they want to survive yeah so and, that's and it's a new yeah. thing you know we have to change with music there's something about people that want to change with music and it's a great thing really because it's not like you've just bought some new clothes or something or it's just fashion there's uh, it's you know you can play different music with the same instruments you can you can like evolve it doesn't destroy the environment it's new music it's wonderful <laughs> Yes, of course. So now you have the second music, uh, uh, biggest music in, in Africa was from Cameroon, Cameroon Makosa. Yeah. So it, it also incorporated in the Coupe de Calais some Makosa uh, 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 sound. So it is a mixture of a source. You like Makosa, you'll be dancing Coupe de Calais. You like rumba or whatever, you'll be dancing Coupe, uh, Coupe de Calais. You like Ivory Coast music, you will be dancing Coupe de Calais. So and it's a kind a of a club sound. Um, it's another modern sound that's for dancing and that people are making electronic versions of it and making yes. sort of pop songs out of yes. this. Oh, yes, of course. Coupe. Of course, of course. So now you will see that uh, I have a couple of... Uh, a couple of uh, singles mm. uh, that uh, I, I called uh, Decale Reggae. So the Decale Reggae comes. Ah, Decale, yeah. The Decale Reggae comes from Coupe Decale and Reggae. So uh, it is a mixture of Reggae. I say it's a mixture of Reggae and uh, Coupe Decale. So my message in Coupe de Calais is typically a reggae message. But the music itself is, is Coupe de Calais, okay? But the style of delivery of singing is also the Coupe de Calais. So the message is a core reggae message. It is a reggae message in a Coupe de Calais. So what I'm trying actually to do in the coming, uh, uh, because I'm developing this, is uh, in the coming uh, year uh, is uh, to incorporate uh, the reggae drums into Coupe de Calais. That so that... right. We're going to have to reboot because we're coming to yeah. the end of this thing. Yeah. Let's, let's reboot again and finish this off. So, and then... Yeah, so I, 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 right. I want to rebrand Yes, I want to rebrand it. I want to rebrand it. Sounds excellent. Yeah. Right, I'm going to, and we're going to go and start again at the meeting thing. I'm going to email it to 